Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about creating a uh, beautiful and simple uh, visual representation of the data that you can read from the sensors, so like a dashboard if you will, uh, for the Raspberry Pi Sense Hat. And if you're not familiar with the Sense Hat, here's a picture of it. It's got the uh, RGB LED matrix so you can make it light up and, and show different stats and or pictures or, or lighting schemes whatever you want and it also has humidity pressure uh, temperature accelerometer I mean all kinds of stuff on there and it snaps right on top of your Raspberry Pi and so it couldn't be easier to install you just click it in and plug your Pi in and you're ready to go so let's assume that you've uh, purchase one of these and you, you've just plugged it in and you have no idea where to start and we'll begin from there. So the first thing that I recommend is connecting to your Raspberry Pi through something called PuTTY which is essentially going to be a way to connect to your Pi from a different computer and this is great. So as long as you have your Raspberry Pi powered on you have it connected into a network connection whether it's through the Ethernet port or through a Wi-Fi adapter doesn't matter. It's going to give you an opportunity uh, to connect from, say, your Windows desktop or you know your Mac desktop or whatever it is, and go through the command line to sort of program your code. And it means you don't have to have your Pi connected to a monitor, which means you can have your Pi outside if you want, or in a closet or a server room or wherever it is uh, that you need to take these readings from. And the best way to do this is to download the PuTTY application and install it on your computer. It's free. And when you open it up, it just asks you for the IP address of your Raspberry Pi and you can get connected. So I have a TP-Link router. I'll log into my router interface. If you have um, like a Netgear Linksys or whatever, just look up the router login information and log in. And we want to find the IP address for the Raspberry Pi. And if we go to DHCP and the client list, this is everything that's connected to my network. And there's one called Raspberry Pi. And this is the IP address. So all we have to do is type it in. And there you go. It's asking us to log in. So you can't see this here, but there's you know nothing connected to the Raspberry Pi other than a network cable and power. But we're able to connect right to it, and the default login is Pi, and the password is Raspberry. So if you haven't changed that, you probably should, uh, but the default login is that. And we're at a command prompt, and we can see the directory contents, and we can start creating files and, and adding Python code. It essentially allows us to build our app here and then run it here without having to switch to a Raspberry Pi with a monitor and a keyboard and, and a mouse. That's kind of cumbersome. So we're just sort of uh, connecting to it remotely. So I'm going to go into my documents and I have a Python projects folder and I'm going to create a new Python project and I'll just call it uh, sensehat.py. So I'm going to use a text editor called nano. So I'm going to do sudo which is super user command nano and sensehat.py and that brings us into the text editor nano uh, in Linux. Okay so this is actually running remotely on the Raspberry Pi but we're able to see it through this window and in here we'll actually put in all of our Python code I'll show you how that works. So the first thing we need to do is get the um, what do we get. Uh, we need the sense hat documentation, and it's actually on pythonhosted.org, and this is the API docs for the uh, or just the docs for the uh, Python sense hat, and there's an API reference here. And that's what we're looking for. And this is everything you need to know to connect to your sense hat and read a sensor reading. And if you want to play with some of the cooler stuff, like the LED matrix that tells you how to rotate it around, light up pixels, you know, create images, things like that. 
but we're just going to pull at this point the temperature, the barometric pressure, and the humidity. So I'll go down to, um, let's see, we'll go down to, there we go. So environmental sensors, there's one called get humidity. So you'll see that the first thing you have to do is import sense hat. Okay, so you have to import that module. So from sense hat import sense hat. Now, if you haven't already installed sense hat, you'll want to do that. So let's actually back out of that. And the instructions are on the previous page. You run these three commands just right from here. So it's not pip, I'm sorry. It's uh, sudo app get install sense hat. And there you go. So it says it's already the newest version. So I've already installed this. And then you do sudo pip 32 install pillow. So you want to run these three commands right here from your uh, SSH from um, PuTTY and run that and it'll import all the tools necessary. So let's go back in to the sensehat.py document. So assuming that you've ran the install here, we can successfully go back and we can import uh, the sensehat module. And that will allow us to run these functions here. So you'll see when this is sense equals sensehat. So that just initializes the object for you to manipulate later on. And to get the humidity, we're going to just copy the humidity and you right click to paste it in. And the temperature is here. Paste that in and pressure is here. So we'll paste that in. And there you go. So to test that this working, let's print these out and we'll do print humidity, print temp and print pressure. And we'll save and exit and then we'll just do python sensehat.py. And okay, so we're getting successful readings. Now you notice that this is in Celsius, so we might want to convert that first. If you're using Celsius, good for you, but I am not. So I'm going to do some math, and the formula for that is to multiply your Celsius reading by 9 fifths and then add 32. So let's save that and run it again. Whoops. All right, so about 67 degrees in here. So we're getting an accurate reading at this point. So that's great. So good start. Um, also notice that these are uh, floats and it's the high degree of precision. And honestly, we probably only need two degrees of precision. So let's round that down. So we're gonna encapsulate these in round. I'll just do round. comma two and that's going to round it down to two places and we'll do the same thing here we're going to do round two and you know what oops not there back here we probably don't need these outside parentheses because the order of operations is actually going to do the multiplication first and then the addition second. So we can get rid of those. Uh, so basically the only thing inside the parentheses is the round function. So we're going to round that down and then going to round pressure to two places. And we'll save that. And there you go. So now we actually have some readable, uh, fairly accurate uh, readings from our sense hat. So now we got to figure out how we're going to make that look good on the internet. So let's do this first. Let's go in and let's get rid of this. Now that we know they're working, we don't need to print them out anymore. 
And let's tab these over and make a function. So we're going to just do def readings and then we'll just do readings. Let's, oh, let's import time. So we, what we're going to do is make this run in a loop. So like every 30 seconds or every minute or whatever, we can have it read the temperature. So import time and let's do while true readings and we'll do time dot sleep and I put the amount of seconds we'll do 30 seconds so um, and then we'll just say print readings recorded so we run this it's gonna it's gonna run and it's gonna print every 30 seconds that the readings were successfully recorded and it should in theory at this point I'm kind of just winging it but it should uh, kind of just create a loop where it just runs over and over again so you can leave this script running uh, on your Raspberry Pi and um, with any luck, it'll just start outputting the uh, readings every 30 seconds. There you go. So it is working, and we'll just go ahead and break out of this with Control-C, interrupt, and we'll go back in. And now we have to figure out, now that we're saving the readings every 30 seconds to uh, these variables, we have to do something with them. So I'm going to show you a site called dweet.io, and this is... a example of how simple this can be. The way Dweet works is you have uh, like an app that you create. So someone made one called Friendly Profit. Well, that doesn't have anything in it, so let's try another one. Uh, someone has one called R3 Monitor. And these are all the things that they're monitoring. So what you can do is you can actually create your own uh, extension named whatever you want, and it'll just display it like this, which is really pretty cool. So uh, let's see how we can do that. We're going to look for the uh, documentation, which is hiding somewhere here. Okay, so it says to, to post data to tweet, to, excuse me, to tweet, you're just going to use this URL and put whatever thing name you want. And then any variable that you pass at the end will be saved to the dashboard. So let's copy this. And we're going to import requests, which is like your HTTP uh, module allows you to send and receive data to APIs. If you don't have requests installed, if you're new to this, uh, you can we'll back out and just type uh, pip install requests and that will install the request module for you. Uh, or you can do sudo app to get requests probably as well if you don't have pip installed. And that that will get, it's just like when you do the original setup, you, you do the, the uh, installation of the modules. So I already have requests installed, so I'll be able to use that. And what we're gonna do is we're going to test Dweet first to make sure that it's working. And so the URL is going to have to look something like this. So uh, let's just go up here and we'll type in r equals request dot post. And then the way requests works is you just put the URL in. So it's HTTPS Dweet dot IO Dweet for and we'll name this, you can name this whatever you want. And then when you go to that URL, it'll show the data that you've submitted. So we'll call this sense hat and we'll put uh, HTP for humidity temp pressure. And then you go question mark and it's just following the structure here. If you're not familiar with requests, uh, you might want to look that up like API request. And then you say like uh, temp equals uh, we'll just put in some va value 73 and 
humidity equals, let's make this a little bit bigger, uh, 44 and pressure equals 880, something like that. I'm going to close that out. And so when this runs, what it's going to do is it's going to it's going to connect to this URL and post this data to our tweet. Okay, so let's exit out, run that, and then we'll just navigate to the tweet, the follow URL, which is going to be tweet.io slash follow slash whatever the name is. So it'll be sense hat uh, HTP. And there you have it. So this is pretty cool already. And we can see, we'll interrupt this and go back in, that whatever data that we append to this, so we have 73, 44, and 80, it shows up right here. So all we have to do to get the real uh, values in there is to construct this URL to where it actually utilizes uh, these values. Now. These values are currently uh, float values. They're numerical values, so they can't be converted to a string. So what we'll do is we'll convert these to a string uh, as we take the reading. So let's do str and parentheses. And we'll do str parentheses. So this is converting these numbers into a string so that we can uh, use them in a URL. So str and then the URL will equal the first part of this here. So we'll do https tweet.io tweet for sense hat uh, HTP question mark and then we'll do plus temp equals plus temp. And so it's going to pull our, our stringified uh, temperature value plus, and then we have to do the ampersand. So n, okay, so we're constructing this exactly the way that it looks here. Humidity equals plus humidity plus and pressure equals pressure. And then we'll just simply change this to the variable URL. So when this function's called, it'll take the, the readings for all three metrics, round them down to two places, convert them into a string, which will allow us to use the plus function here to sort of append to the string. And then we're constructing URL, which is the base URL okay which we get from here and the temperature the temp reading the humidity the humidity reading pressure pressure reading and then down here we're going to use request to post to this url and we're going to um, run the function and actually we can move that up here so let's do r equals requests dot post url Actually, no, let's not do that. Okay, so this looks good the way that it was. And now, hopefully, we will be getting live readings every 30 seconds. So let's change this to every 10 seconds just so we can see some action. And we'll save, exit, run. Oh, let's see. Invalid syntax. Let's go take a look at what that is. Pressure equals pressure. Oh, there we go. Missing a plus sign. There we go. Save that. Run again. And oh. so we do have to do that. That's okay. So I was right. I didn't trust my intuition there. Okay. So 
So now, if it looks like this, hopefully it'll work. Let's give it a shot. And there you go. So you see it automatically updated. And we get a little uh, confirmation um, after 10 seconds that the it's, it's indicating to the uh, terminal that it's reading. And you can see these little spark lines here indicating that we're getting readings too. So this may very well be good enough for you, but there is another tool that's quite helpful. So we'll leave this running and we'll go to their partner company called freeboard.io. And I'll log in, I have a free account. Let's delete this one out. And if you go to freeboard.io, just sign up and then create a new uh, dashboard. And I'm gonna call it Pi. And this will be our dashboard. It's blank. I'm going to add a pane and we'll add a title. So we're just text. This will be uh, sense hat. Let's do big text. And the value will be um, temp and pressure. All right, so that's too small. So fortunately we can go to the little, for the actual container, we can click the settings and make this full screen, which is three columns, still too big. So let's make this regular text. Okay. So that's like a header and we'll add a, uh, let me mute out my hangouts here. Okay. So we'll add another pane and we'll tell it to connect to uh, let's let's do the temperature and we'll do it as a gauge and we'll type temperature and we'll connect it to the data source now it has built-in support for uh, whoop, we have to go out and add a data source here sorry so we'll add data sources it has built-in support for Dweet.io. it also has built-in support for JSON so if you want to just pull straight from an API you can and so we're going to do Dweet.io. And we'll name it sense hat and thing name is the thing name from here. So we'll copy this over. Okay. So whatever you named your project, paste it in here, save that. And now it's able to connect directly to this uh, dashboard here. So when we add in a gauge, I put temperature, You'll see sense hat pop up in the data source and you'll see the three variables that we've been writing to the tweet deck there. We'll do temp, units, Fahrenheit, and I'm just going to leave 100 as the maximum and I'll put uh, 50 as the minimum. So that way it gives us like a scale. If you have a server, for example, and you don't want to go over, say, like 120 degrees or 150 or whatever, you know, whatever it is, or... Uh, the ambient temperature, if it's outside the cabinet, maybe you don't want your server room to go over 80 degrees. You can set the maximum to whatever your, your like threshold would be. And we save this. You'll see that it's 67.26. And that's the most recent reading from our Python script that it's been recording. All right, so let's add another one and we'll do uh, spark line maybe and we'll do humidity data source humidity and we'll put percentage humidity percentage and we'll just refresh this and there you go so this is a spark line and every 10 seconds it'll take a new reading there you go so you see that it's it was 35.84, now it's 34.92. You could like blow on the sense hat and the uh, heat and the uh, moisture from your breath would actually cause the readings to spike. So you can test it that way. And then let's go in here and add another pane here and make it two columns wide. And we'll add in the uh, just let's do text. 
I'll type barometric pressure, value, pressure, units, I believe it's millibars, and we'll include a spark line too. So we save this in. There you go. So at this point, you're pretty much finished. You can hit full screen, and there you have a dashboard uh, that you can have, like say you have a monitor in your server room, or let's say you have this, uh, your Raspberry Pi is Wi-Fi enabled, and you have it plugged in outdoors. You can have a monitor uh, in your home somewhere that displays all kinds of temperature readings and things like that for like a mini weather station. And you can leave this full screen and it'll essentially just uh, keep updating. And you could set the, the timeout to like, like the sleep in, in Python to maybe like once per minute or once every five minutes. Uh, whatever your frequency that you wanna read is, that's up to you. But you know, there you go, five minutes and you've been able to create a really good looking dashboard using some freely available uh, resources. Now, I will tell you that this data is public. So anyone who goes to this URL can see all of your information. Okay, now in this case, it's just a, like a weather station for my house. So I don't really care if anybody reads that. They're not gonna know where I live or, or anything. It's not sensitive information, but uh, you can lock these and it's cost two bucks a month and it locks this name in so only you can use it and it you, allows you to make it private so people can't read your data. So if you're doing this in a commercial setting, it costs you two bucks a month to lock it out and to guarantee that you keep that name. So if you're building uh, some sort of app on top of this, you don't want this to change. So like if you don't use it for a while and someone else starts using it, you won't have access to this name. So you may want to lock it out and hide it from public view. So that's two bucks a month, that's pretty cheap. So that about wraps it up. Hopefully that helps some people get started. And uh, this is not limited to anything. Like again, you could use like Weather Underground API, uh, stock price APIs, exchange rate APIs. Uh, you could create like, if you have an exchange rate API, like xe.com has one, it's pretty expensive. But if you're tracking a lot of exchange rates, you could create this big interface with a bunch of uh, indicators here that show like you know regularly updated exchange rates in real time the sky is the limit and it's all up to your imagination so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one